Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 4 and continuing with the next topic in this tutorial is maintainability testing. Now from the foundation we know a lot of things from the maintenance point of view that what exactly maintenance is all about and uh, why a product needs to be updated, upgraded from time to time and what kind of effort a testing team requires to have when it comes to maintenance of a product. Because maintenance something is something which deals with updates, upgrades, migration and retirement of a product. And uh, moreover, you do have a lot of things to explore about the same thing in this particular tutorial. So let's get started. Now, as we were just talking about the basics of uh, maintenance, as we talk about updates, upgrades, uh, migration and retirement, it all needs to be a phase where an application stays longer than being developed by something new. So generally a release will be done and once the product is released into the market more than having a development happening on the new releases rather you are looking forward to update the remaining things or a small and new features because it's quite difficult uh, for lots of applications to come up with all new features together at the same time and that's where you may have a brand new release but generally a lot of application undergo a maintenance including like updates, minor updates, upgrades, uh, migration moving from one platform to another and finally the retirement. So here in this particular tutorial we're talking more about what is maintainability testing which falls under the non-functional parameter and it deals with similar kind of things in de details. So the most important thing which we need to understand is how a product can be actually maintained and what efforts and what constraints need to be considered while talking about maintaining a particular product. So this is from the point of maintaining the codes and other things. So typically maintainability objective which may affect the related uh, stakeholders should be minimizing the cost of owning or operating the software is to just make sure that it, it, it reduces all the effort which is required in order to uh, push something new to the customer and uh, give them that comfort to use that and uh, minimizing the downtime required for software maintenance. Generally you would see a message coming in to you that our servers will be under maintenance from uh, 12 o'clock midnight to 5 o'clock in the morning so they need around 5 hours time to do that job So and uh, they don't want to disturb you uh, the moment you get up in the morning and start doing your activity so this is where we want to make sure that it should be as minimum as possible so that we can accommodate during certain period of time where people are not highly impacted with their activities and keeping your end users very happy with the support. Maintainability test should be included in a test approach where one or more of the following factors apply. So first of all you need to include as a part of the approach itself that this product once released will be under maintenance and the maintenance factors include such kind of things which a team has to be aware of. So includes software changes are likely after the software enters production. So it's just that uh, there are certain factors which I should consider that uh, it, the software changes are likely to happen after the software enters into production. So correct defects or introduce planned updates which you need to generally do. The benefits of achieving maintainability objectives over the software development lifecycle are considered by the affected stakeholders to outweigh the cost of performing the maintainability test and making any required changes. So that's very common with respect to the maintenance that is generally to meet that expectation of the maintenance phase in order to uh, meet the objectives that is owning the product and uh, reducing the downtime and uh, that should be given more value compared to the software development cycle. The risk of poor software maintainability is another factor which I should consider during the maintainability part of it. Generally when I create a new product I should maintain all the artifacts what I have prepared during the very first release so that I consider from the point of having a future maintainability of the particular codes which you have created probably even the test cases not only the code but the test cases as well these will be helpful for the maintenance team in order to run the test cases again to make sure that whenever an update happens then system still remains the same does not have the uh, drawbacks of these updates which happen so keeping that in the first release uh, 
into considerations will allow you to have future maintainability more easy and accessible. The next part is talking about the various types of the maintainability testing. Uh, we may have static and dynamic uh, maintainability testing where static is just usual from the foundation. You know that it is limited to non-executable part of it where we generally try to apply certain techniques from the static analysis and reviews and review everything that if it is up to the mark and has any kind of impacts. So maintainability testing should be started as soon as design documentation is available and should continue throughout the code implementation effort. So yes team, whenever you have a work product being created, you undergo with the review phase and make sure that everything is up to the mark, complete and clear on all the manners. And this will be from the point of maintenance of the application code. Uh, not from the point of finding a defect in order to uh, process it further and create the application. But yes, it will be from the point of maintenance that will this code be allowed to update something tomorrow or will this part be allowed to modify further in future. So that is what we look forward to have static analysis for maintainability testing. Similarly, on the other side, we do have dynamic uh, maintainability testing, which interacts with the product and uh, interacts with the code and it executes that. So static is uh, only about running, uh, executing or just making sure that the code is static. You don't run anything, you don't run the application, you don't run the code. Whereas in dynamic testing, you do everything practically and interact with the product in order to check that if the product has a window available to do such activities, which if I put tomorrow will allow to accept and uh, adopt those new features coming in happening in future. So yes, we do have two different types of it to do static and dynamic maintainability testing. At the last, we are just talking about the sub characteristics of maintainability. Of course, the main major parameter is to make sure that it allows you to have a new features incorporated, including update and upgrades. But what else is included here? The maintainability of the system can be measured in terms of effort required to diagnose a problem identified within a system. For example, analyzability. Just try to understand that in this way, for example, you have written a code, but you have not maintained in such a way that if you leave the organization, someone else tried to try fix the issue, then he is unable to understand what exactly is written there or what code of what party, uh, part is written in a particular manner and uh, what is the connectivity, how exactly this code applies here. So it might become a lot of complications for a person trying to analyze that. So analyzability is another part of it which allows you to make sure that this code is understandable to anyone who is looking into this if they have a good understanding of the standards of code and uh, understanding of the programming language so that would help them to analyze but yes is that the code is written in such a way that it can be understood by anyone and they can very well rectify the issues so analyzability deals with that whereas the second part is the test the changed system testability if i modify anything will that be testable tomorrow so do i have enough test cases the test cases should be written in again such a way that it is allowed to run those test cases and define certain parameters like impact analysis to allow you decide what test cases to pick up. So if you have traceability, which will help you to define the number of test cases to be run. If you do not have proper traceability, then testability will become a challenge for you because you need to determine what test cases to be executed once you update a particular feature. Factors which influence both analyzability and testability include application of good programming practices like based on these standards and availability of technical documentation which would help us to understand how this uh, change or update will impact the rest of the application. Other relevant quality sub characteristics of maintainability include modifiability. That means the code what you're writing should have an applicability or a you know, window open to modify something in future. The code should be written in such a way considering future aspects of the product and allow the next developer to make some changes if required in future. So if you think that a product may have new features coming in tomorrow and we must have a window or the code must be written in such a way that allows modification within the code. So that's one thing. Second is modularity. 
uh, just like writing a code module by module helps you to very well understand that which code is about which module and writing in uh, the script and the code for different modules uh, in a modular way it allows the a new developer to also understand that uh, this is a module per one code this is a module two code this is module three code so it becomes quite simple for another developer to understand what code lies where and how to rectify the issues or maybe add something new to it additionally reusability is another important thing which will help you to do maintainability the degree to which an asset can be used more than one time within one system or in building other assets so you know if we talk about the library frameworks you talk about any such documentation which has uh, features where it can be reused for any number of times in future that helps us to uh, attain those understanding and probably create those outcomes which might be required for maintaining the product so yes these are some of the sub characteristics which might be required in order to understand and implement the maintainability testing so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning